African American legislators have made so many contributions to the legislature and to the people of the state of Texas. By and large, the African Americans that have been elected to the Texas legislature have had to go above and beyond the call of duty. They help, uh, I guess you could say, lay the bridge for African American participation in politics in the state of Texas. I think one of the things that I grew up learning is that you have to be involved to make a difference. It's my belief that we're responsible for the world we live in. You cannot correct the system if you're not willing to be part of the system. You can always do more from within. I think the role of the African American legislator has e evolved and, and, uh, and changed. All of them tried to do the same thing, and that was make Texas better in a time when people weren't paying that much attention to black folks. Texas has been greatly enriched by the contributions of African Americans to business, education, medicine, science, law, and the arts. But some of the most visible and long-lasting contributions of African Americans to Texas have been in politics and government. During the, the 19th century, um, especially uh, right after slavery uh, ended in Texas around 1865, uh, you had many uh, African Americans that got involved in politics because they realized very quickly that politics uh, was the name of the game. You had to get into the policy making end of uh, government in order to make sure that the culture slowly was transformed. In the 19th century, after the Civil War, came Reconstruction, a period when the Union sent federal troops into all the Confederate states to maintain law and order. During this time, many black Texans were elected to and served in the Texas legislature. They were very active in state politics and are credited for creating the public school system in Texas. The first black legislators in Texas, and again, in the South as well, would occur in the 1870s and 1880s. Once the Reconstruction period ended, and I'm sure you're familiar with when Reconstruction ended, it ended when the occupation of the South by federal troops ended. When the federal troops left, um, then things sort of went back to business as usual, and that began the era of Jim Crow in the South. And from that time, around the end of the 19th century, up until the mid-60s, there were not any African-American legislators in the Texas legislature. Jim Crow laws were set up to not allow African Americans a vote and then the county line rule was was started in the state of Texas so that house districts could not break a county line or be drawn in certain ways and that's still the case today. The groundswell that would lead to segregation being the norm in virtually every area of society would also lead to the exclusion of blacks. That blacks in Texas would lose the right to vote and this would, would also lead to blacks being ousted from elected positions. We should always remember our history in terms of the African Americans that have served uh, in this body uh, since uh, Reconstruction. When you begin to think about uh, the contributions that they made as it relates to the creation of the public school system, we need to recognize that um, uh, they were involved in that process and weighed heavily in terms of the legislature's uh, decision and the governor's decision back then to create the public school system, free public school system in the state. The Texas State Legislature is the body of elected representatives that oversees the state government and is charged with appropriating and spending tax dollars. It also enacts laws regarding education, safety, and health care, as well as many other regulations affecting the lives of all Texans. The state legislature is the, is, the, is the one who enacts the laws, who also appropriates the funding. Our role is merely a lawmaker at the state level, and those laws affect every citizen in the state of Texas, some good, some bad, whether it deals with education, health care, or criminal justice. 
African Americans have made significant contributions to the history and culture of Texas. But unfortunately, much of the history of African American life in Texas is disappearing rapidly. Because of the need to preserve this valuable history, the Texas State Legislature established the Texas Institute for the Preservation of History and Culture. We thought that that's a history that was, that was being lost rapidly, and if we didn't do something to preserve it and make it available for future generations, it would not be long before it would be lost altogether. And there is an African proverb that says that when people lose their history, then they are no more. The Texas Institute for the Preservation of History and Culture was created to preserve records, documents, artifacts, and other items relating to the history and culture of Texas. The Institute, which is located on the Prairie View A&M University campus, will reach out to all 254 counties in Texas. The Institute also serves as a conduit to assist historic communities and to help renovate older black neighborhoods and abandoned historic buildings. As late as the 1960s, segregation was the norm in southern states. In Texas, black students and white students attended different schools. So at that time, 1967, I was a teacher. And uh, a teacher uh, in uh, a predominantly minority school because you could only teach at a black school. My mother could only teach at a black school. And so since 1967, the role has changed. I can, you can teach, or mostly wherever you really want to teach if you qualify to do so. I think that it was the role of the African American legislator was quite different uh, than what it is today. We were dealing with issues uh, surrounding uh, segregation and those kinds of issues. The advantage of being present is that when you are at the table in the process uh, there may be some additional thoughts points of view, an, another way of looking at things that you bring to the table. They wanted to make sure that what, whatever it was that they did, that it would set a pattern for those of us who would follow, eventually follow, uh, would at least have a model or some something to kind of get to, to grasp or hold on to, to let us know that it can be done. The first African American to be elected to the Texas State Senate since Reconstruction was a woman who grew up in Houston's Fifth Ward, an inner city area of predominantly black neighborhoods. She graduated from college, earned a law degree, and began a long, distinguished career of public service that took her all the way to the United States Congress. Her name, Barbara Jordan. Barbara Jordan was a true trailblazer, and her political star rose quickly. She successfully ran for office in 1966 and began her role as a state senator in January of 1967, truly a turning point for African Americans and, indeed, all minorities in Texas. Barbara Jordan was a phenomenal woman. She was one who demanded attention no matter what she did or what she said. She was always uh, very principled. Uh, she believed in being honest. She believed in keeping her word. She learned to shake hands. She learned to cut deals. She learned that she had to operate in a world that was very much different from the African-American world of Fifth Ward Houston. 